Yeah, I have, I, hello every viewers. I, my name is Mr. Kevin Kumauze. I'm taking known as Mr. Lobo Kebo. And I just want to teach you on a topic on Ink Mummies and I hope you will get a better knowledge of what we have to do today. The topic for today is population. Population as a concept is always talking about numbers of whatever. But this time around, I'm concentrating on numbers of people. Then in economics, whenever you hear population, you refer to the numbers of people. And what is it? The number of people that lives in a geographical area, location, or a country at a particular period of time is referred to as population. So in very brief, anytime you are told what is population, what should be at your mind or your mindset is population of people. And population simply is defined as the total number of people that live in the geographical area, country, place, location, at a particular period. In that note, we have two types of population. We have a okay, body, so that's our, I will make it say two types of population census. Now, let's define census first, population census. Permit me to write it up on me. Population census. Now, what is a census? A census is meant to be counting. Whenever you hear census, it's always talking about counting. Now, the last time we had a census in this country, uh, some part of uh, in Africa, I don't know where you're getting me, but in Nigeria, it was 2006. Never then, we've not had any census. But what is census? Census is meant to be the total number of people or the adding of people that lives in a particular area or country at a particular period of time. With that concept, you can now define population census. What is population census? Population census can simply be defined as the counting of people, either handicaps or no handicaps, that live in a particular area or country at a particular period. Such is known to refer to as well, a population census. Now, many types of population census do we have? We have two types of population census. We have de facto and we have the job. Now, when you say de facto, de facto is re referring to the people that you can see before you count. You cannot count when you don't see. So the facto talks about those that you can see and you count. But the job refers to those that you do not see them when you are counting, but expectedly you know that they are supposed to be in that place. So you counted them in their absence. Otherwise, so that's counting by pros. Counting by pros. So when you say the facto, the facto is the act of counting those that are or that were physically present as at the time of counting. You saw them, you counted them. That is the factor. Is that it? Then the job is the act of counting those that are that were meant to be at a particular place. But at the time of counting, they were absent. But already you know that that's where they live. So what did you do? You counted them even in their absence. That's what we call the job. Otherwise known as counting by pros. Counting by pros. Are we good to know to go? Now the next thing I really want to know is importance of population census. Importance of population census. Importance of population census. You ask yourself, why taking the census? That's what we want to look at now. The importance, the reason of population census. Number one, one of the importance of population centers, without doubt, is to know the total number of people that are living in that environment. To know the total number of people living within the country. Then number two, another reason why you must take a census is to enable the government to allocate resources into various sectors of the economy. As of 2006, when a country in Africa, Nigeria, to be precise, two population census, there was a problem then within, uh, with 
Lagos State and Kano State. I think Lagos State was having 9 point something million, while Kano State was having about 10 million or thereabouts. And there was this issue between the state government and them. Why? Because they felt that the government was supposed to give more to Lagos. So the essence of population census in that directive is for to, to enable the government to allocate resources into various sectors of the economy. It enables the government to allocate resources into various sectors of the world economy. The other reason why you calculate census or you take census is for you to know the dependency ratio. What do you understand by the dependency ratio? That is, to know those who are dependent and independent. You have to know those who are capable of working and those who are not capable of working. That is another reason. Another reason why you take census is to know the number of immigrants. Who are the immigrants? Those that are leaving the country to another country. That is another reason for calculating or for taking census. Now, with these reasons, which is not limited to this, it's one of those reasons, or it are the reasons why you take the census as it were. Now, the next thing we need to look into is growth rates. Now, what is growth rates? This is the rate at which population multiplies itself. The rate by which population multiplies itself is not referred to as what? Growth rates. That's the rate at which population multiplies itself. Now, the formula for growth rates is what? Bet rates minus debt rates plus immigrants minus emigrants. Bet rate minus debt rate plus immigrants minus emigrants. Okay? Now, you have all. You can equally say that your growth rate is anything as for pet rates minus pet rates plus net migration or you can equally say natural growth rates is what pet rates minus debt rates. Okay, so in this case now, we have defined growth rate as the rate that the population multiplies itself. We have looked at the mathematical aspects or the formulas that are regarding to your bet rate, which is the word the bet minus the debt rate plus immigrants minus emigrants or the bet rate minus debt rate plus net migration. So what is net migration? Simply defined as the difference between immigrants and emigrants. So the difference between immigrants and emigrants is what you call your word, the net migration. Then naturally, natural growth rate is what just your bet rate minus the debt rate. So it depends on the content in which you are defining the form or looking at it from. So these are the formulas that we have. But before we put it into figures, let's start with bet rates. What is bet rate? Bet rate can simply be defined as the rate per thousand of a given population. Or the bet per thousand in a given population. Bet per thousand in a given population. And it's otherwise known as what? Fertility rates. You can equally call it fertility or natality rates. So the birth rate is the birth per thousand in the given population, which is otherwise known as fertility or nat natality rates. And what is the death rate? The death per thousand in the given population. And it's otherwise known as what? Mortality. You realize that mortality is always associated with more mortality, mortuary. So it's always the birth per thousand in the given population. Then what about immigrant? Immigrant is the movement of people into a country and emigrant is the movement of people out of a country. So you can see that the birth rate is always positive. Death rate tends to uh, my, uh, subtract the numbers of deaths. Immigrants are coming in, so that's why you have positive. And emigrants are going out, and that's why it's known as what? The negative value there. 
Then you can only see this bare field my not there today. And I told you earlier on that so my next migration is just the difference between immigrants and world immigrants. And naturally, without the best, sorry, without the immigrant and immigrant, you have the best trade minus world, the dead trade, which you have as there. Now, without wasting further time, I'll go straight to the mathematical aspect associated with this. If you are giving a question, mathematically or economics, meaning in our university days we call it econometrics, you give me a question. On these, I have find the growth rates if bed rate is 400,000, dead rate I have to abbreviate it so that I can be fast is what 150,000 immigrants that those coming in is. 50,000 and emigrants is 20,000. And you are told to calculate the growth rate. Very simple, apply the formula. Now you have your growth rate as well as your death rate minus death rate plus immigrants minus emigrants. Please have to abbreviate it so that I can be a little bit extra and fast. Now in this case, your growth rate is what? When we're giving the book the birth rates, 400,000 minus the debt. Of course, whenever there's a debt, there's always subtraction. That's minus 150,000 plus those coming in, which is what 50,000 minus those going out, which is what 20,000. So when you add common addition, 150 minus 400 minus 150 will give us 250,000 and 50 minus 20 will give us 30,000. Some of what you have there, 280,000. Cool. Very simple. And let's take another question. If you are you ask a question like this, can I not go? Of course, you can summarize it. You can check it out your own way. If you are giving a question like this, he finds the bet rates if debt rate is 50,000, growth rate is 200,000, immigrants is 40,000, and immigrants is 60,000. 60, Apply the formula, don't just forget that formula. Your growth rate is birth rate minus death rate plus immigrants minus immigrants. So what's the birth rate here? Your birth rate in this case was not given. You know, in this case now, your questions can be can come in order in any way. But what matters is that I'm sure you did subject the formula where you were not in your GSS2 or SS1. So it does make the group rate the subject of the best rate the subject of the formula, and that's so. So you realize that some of the uh, values that is there, you re, you just put it there. Now the group rate is meant to be outside, but this time around we want to make the best rate the subject of the world, of the formula. Now let's start by what we have here. What's the group rate there? The group rate is two hundred thousand. It's got to the best rate we are not giving minus the debt, which is fifty thousand. Plus, what the immigrant? Forty immigrant is having plus because you are in added to the numbers. And minus is what immigrant because they are reducing from the values that is there. Now, in this case, we have two hundred thousand. Let's just deal with what is here. Forty minus fifty thousand minus sixty thousand. That's about one hundred ten thousand. The 110,000 minus 110,000, let's make it, let's put it there, bet rate is equal to minus 110,000. 110,000 plus 40,000. So what do I do? Minus 110,000 plus 40,000 is expected to give us 
70 minus 70,000. So when you subtract this from this, you have your 210, 200,000 is equal to the base rate minus 70,000. We are making the metric so that the formula now. So this guy comes over here. What do you have then? Your metrics will now be what? 200,000. The main negative sign changes to positive sign plus 70,000. So in that case, our metric is 270,000. Very simple. So if you want to check if your answers are correct, if it's going to give us the pro trade value. You can do it. Let's do it together. Let's see. I want to get, let me see if it's going to give me 200,000. Check. My students, check. I, I know that my pro trade formula is called bed trade minus debt trade plus immigrants minus what? Immigrant. I want to see if it's going to give us 200,000. We have our bread trade here as well. 270,000 minus what the debt. The debt there is what 50,000. What immigrants? Immigrants is 40,000. What the immigrants? Immigrants is what 60,000. Wow. So you realize here, yeah, this guy and this guy, of course, that was 110,000. So I have 270,000 plus 40,000. Add this guy to this guy, that will be minus 110,000. I have to be sure. Now, 240 plus 40, expected to is expected to give us 270 plus 40. Now, 310,000 minus 110,000. So when you subtract to 310 for 110, what did it mean to you? 200. Is this what it's giving us? Okay, yeah, I was. It's giving us 200,000. So you can see that it's giving us the value back as 200,000. So confirm that. So it all depends on whatever kind of question you are giving to you. The question that is always coming within this is always within the contents of the formula. So once you, are, once you know the formula, you can attempt any questions whatsoever. Ever. I think I've done justice to the growth rate. Now, without wasting our time, we've done what is the, the population, we define population, we have looked at population sensors, we have looked at physical population sensors, we have looked at growth rate, we have looked at the mathematical aspect on growth rate. We are doing well. I want to believe that as we are doing this, you are understanding and you are getting the concept right. Now, the next topic under this topic is what we call our Torsion Theory on Population. Does that ring a bell? Oh, yes, okay. Yeah. Let me write the robot paper so that you can see it properly. Maltosian. Maltosian. Theory on Population. Maltosian theory on population. Who is this man? In the 18th century, he was a very popular figure as at that time. His name was Maltos. Now, because he came up with the theory, his name, the theory came after his name. They, 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 they made this theory based on his name. Now, who, who was Maltos? Maltos was a person who was a reverend minister as, a, as at his time. He was not just a reverend minister, he was an economist. So he had a double one of He was a reverend minister and he was also an economist. And what the Maltos do in his own time, Maltos observed that in Great Britain then, because he was a citizen of Britain, in Great Britain then, the population was fast, outgrowing food productivity. And he came up with this theory that if something is not done on time, it will get to a time where the productivity will outgrow the population, sorry, the population will outgrow the productivity. And he came up with his essay on population. Now, when he came up with his essay on population, he decided to call his essay Maltosian theory of population. Now, let me just give you a brief analysis of what Maltos said in his essay. Maltos, as a matter of fact, was a reverend minister born in the 18th century. 
and he came up with an essay of population as a result of the problem that was associated with what he was experiencing at his time. And he said in his essay that if population is not controlled or checked through positive or preventive approach, Positive or preventive approach. Now, what do you call the positive approach? Positive approach like natural disasters. Natural disasters such as tsunami, such as earthquake, such as anything that can, be, can naturally occur that we epidemics that we have. What we have now, uh, we have uh, COVID-19 now. So he said, unless if the, the population is not Checked through this positive method, which is natural disasters, which I've given some examples, or preventive method, which is what late marriages. Late marriages. He said the population will grow at a geometrical progression. And what is this called geometrical progression? That is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. 128, 256, and so on and so forth. When the food productivity will go at an arithmetic progression, progression that is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. You can see they are both increasing, but one is increasing better than the other one. So he said if the food will grow, the population will grow at the geometric progression. Why the food will grow at an arithmetical progression. And with, with what you are seeing here, it will be a problem. If the food continues to grow at a very slow rate and the population continues to grow at a very geometrical rate, the next is that it will lead to famine and the people will eventually die. So, with all that is said here, in summary of what Malto said in his essay, is that if population is not controlled or checked through positive or preventive approach, that the population will grow at a geometric progression, while the food will grow at an arithmetic progression, and this will lead to famine, and the people will eventually die. That is something of what Marco said in his words, theory. Now, while he was saying this in his theory, Marco received some criticism from people like Karl Marx. He had some contemporaries that criticized him and called him a, 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 an economist of two. And he was a prophet of doing, he was also a reverend minister, so they called him prophet of doing. So he had some criticism and he also had some people that thought that he's um, advantageous as well. Or rather, instead of using the word advantage, he had some people, some positive approach, yes, as the aspect. Now, when Matos was proved wrong, number one, Matos was proved wrong as a result of international trade. As a result of international trade, you realize that what a lot of people could now go and buy goods outside. Two, it was also proved wrong as a result of there were new settlements. So where people were not settling before as a result of congestion, they had to go to those new areas. And the congested area now was decongested. So it was proved wrong in that aspect. Matos was also proved wrong in the area, area where in terms of agricultural products, there was improvement in agricultural products which also led to improvement in it and there were so many food that was proved wrong. Matos was also proved wrong in the, and on all these things are attributes of the advanced countries. There was also proved wrong in things for the medical sector. In the medical sector, each of them expressing high mortality rates, they were expressing um, high fertility rates. So the people were not dying as Matos said. Now, the last place where it was proved right. It was proved right in mostly African countries. You realize in most African countries, so many things happened. One, there was, in the medical sector, there was poor medical facilities which led to death trade. Agricultural sector, they were using crude oil which they could not use, they could not meet up with the food availability in the last two. Then three, a lot of uh, African people depended on polygamy, which actually led to what? A lot of children, uh, men giving birth to children who were asking them in the farm. And that actually led to a lot of what? Poverty in the land. 
and that's where we're going. Thank you. I hope you are able to understand this aspect of population. Thank you.